Hello friends, welcome. I am Dr. Harvinder Singh. Welcome to Psychiatry Education Forum's Academy's Updates. So on December 16, this was announced that Cariprazine, the other name is Vralar, got a new FDA indication as an augmentation agent for major depressive disorder in adults. And this short video will discuss that. And again, I will say these videos are for medical professionals. If you are a patient with these indications, please discuss with your doctor. So I will be discussing this in various sections. And I have no disclosures, no financial tie with this or any other pharmaceutical companies. And uh, I am Dr. Harvinder Singh, creator of Psychiatry Education Forum Academy. So let's begin. Now, there were three FDA indications for cariprazine before this, but now it carries four for psychiatric conditions. Let's go over old one first very quickly. We all know that this is approved for schizophrenia in adults. This is indicated for bipolar 1 disorder, manic or mixed episode acute treatment in adults, and for the depressive episode of bipolar 1 disorder in adults. But now, it also carries this indication for major depressive disorder as an adjunctive treatment to the antidepressant. So not alone, but as an add-on treatment. Now, let's understand how to dose cariprazine for major depressive disorder augmentation. MDD stands for major depressive disorder. So let's start with the starting dose. So starting dose is the lowest dose which it comes in is 1.5 milligram daily. And then you can titrate the dose to 3 milligram. But this day 15 is very, very clinically relevant. Even they recommend this that whenever you titrate a dose from 1.5 to 3, at least 14 days or more should be there. Otherwise, the risk of side effects will go up. So two weeks and then if there is no response, you can go to three milligram. But the recommended dose is either 1.5 or three. And the maximum dose is three milligram. So very easy, right? 1.5 or three. Higher doses, 4.5, um, or more are mainly for the bipolar diagnosis and schizophrenia. Now, let's understand if there is any dosage adjustment needed with hepatic or renal impairment. Starting with our liver, with a mild to moderate hepatic impairment, no dosage adjustment is needed. But with severe, you don't rec we, you, you will not give it, mainly because this is not studied. So be mindful of that. Second is with the renal impairment, same formula applies here for mild to moderate renal impairment, no dosage adjustment, and for severe, you don't recommend cariprazine here. Now, let's briefly understand the drug interactions with cariprazine. What should you know? For that, you need to know the cytochrome P450 system that this medication goes through, which is 3A4. So obviously, you need to be mindful of drug interactions around that. Starting with 3A4 inhibitors. If your patient is on these 3A4 inhibitors, you need to reduce the cariprazine dose to half because more of the cariprazine will accumulate in the system. And we know how long half-life this medicine has. And I will talk about that in a minute. But let's talk about 3A4 inhibitors. But before that... If your patient is on 4.5 milligram daily dose, you will reduce that to 1.5 or 3. This won't apply here because 4.5 is not a recommended dose for MDD augmentation. So obviously, if somebody is on 3, you will go to 1.5. What if your patient is on 1.5, which is a recommended dose for MDD augmentation? What will you do then? Well, you will go to every other day dosing. Very important to know this. 
And the uh, now let's go over 3A4 inhibitors. I will not go individually, otherwise this video will get longer. I will just briefly touch them. First, among antibiotics, clarithromycin and erythromycin are 3A4 inhibitors, but not azithromycin. So that's a safer option with cariprazine. Antifungals, ketoconazole, itraconazole or fluconazole should be, uh, they are inhibitors, so reduce the dose of cariprazine with them. Antidepressant, list is long, but mainly nifazidone and fluvoxamine here. And then HIV antivirals, indenavir, nelfinavir, ritonavir, and sequinavir. And the last is hypertension, antihypertensive medication, mainly verapamil and diltiazem. So here you don't stop cariprazine, you just reduce the dose. When will you stop? When you are using them with 3A4 inducers, and these are among anti-HIV uh, medication, efavirenz and nevirapine. Be very mindful of that. You don't use cariprazine here. And then most of the anti-epileptics, which are also mood stabilizer, few of them, car carbamazepine, oxcarbazepine, phenytoin, barbiturates, or phenobarbital, so if your patient is on either carbamazepine or oxcarbazepine, for, for example, bipolar, right? Uh, you don't use um, carbamazepine with that. And then among herbal medication, St. Jones Wort, we have a chapter on that separately. So be mindful of that. And other medicines like modafinil used a lot for many indications and then rifampin. So this is a very brief summary of that. Moving on to the cariprazine and long half-life. Now, stay mindful of this because both cariprazine and its active metabolite have a very long half-life to the point whenever you do any dose changes, it will take few weeks for this to be reflected. So you always monitor your patient closely whenever you do a dose change, not only for the response, but also for adverse reaction, it can take several weeks. So, and also when you stop this medication, be mindful, you see how that it, the active metabolites will decline by 50% in one week. I felt like this is very clinically relevant, so I included this slide here, but let's talk about two studies briefly that FDA used to base their this new indication on. The two studies are, this is a first study, and uh, the st study design was like this. This is randomized, double-blind, placebo-control, multi-center trial. You can see this was conducted in these different countries, and there were 751 participants. And the patients who had inadequate response to antidepressant monotherapy were randomized to these three groups in one to one to one ratio. And these three groups are, first is cariprazine, 1.5 milligram dose with antidepressant. Second is three milligram cariprazine with antidepressant. And third is the placebo with antidepressant. And for six weeks, medications was given once daily in addition to ongoing antidepressant treatment. And in the end, the results showed that three milligram of cariprazine given with antidepressant showed a reduction in MedRS at week six compared to placebo, but this did not meet statistical significance, but response was good. So this was one study. So they used the second study which was published, I think, in Journal of Clinical Psychiatry around 2016 or so. And very similar design, randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled, flexible dose, outpatient, multi-center trial in these different countries, 808 participants. And they were screened for one to two weeks, and then they were wash washout was done of medicines which are not allowed with cariprazine that we already talked about. And the patients who were eligible in the end entered this eight-week trial. 
Be mindful. The first one that I talked about was six weeks. This is eight weeks. So they entered this eight week double blind one to one to one ratio to these three arms. And these three arms are cariprazine one to two milligram with antidepressant. Second is two to 4.5 milligram with antidepressant and then placebo. And the result was that two to 4.5 milligram cariprazine at week six showed a, a significant reduction in med RS compared to placebo, but the one to two milligram did not. But I have not mentioned here, um, but the side effect also went up with the increased dosage. Now, what were the side effects seen in these two trials? The most common one is akathisia. You all know we see this a lot with cariprazine. Now, they looked at adverse reaction that resulted in discontinuation of treatment and akathisia was on top, 2%. Uh, but they also saw that patients who discontinued, right? 6% of cariprazine versus 3% of placebo were due to akathisia here. Uh, sorry, uh, this is not due to akathisia, like 6% versus 3% of placebo. They discontinued due to adverse reaction, but akathisia was one of the common causes for discontinuation. So be mindful of that. The second side effect is nausea. Third is constipation. Fourth is increased appetite. So this increases the worry of weight gain, right? Let's talk about that briefly. What did they found? This was very interesting to see that they mentioned the mean weight change was less than two pounds and less than 3% of the patient had weight increase of more than 7%. So be mindful of that. Risk do exist with these class of medication. They are not weight neutral. And then the other side effects are insomnia and fatigue. Very common. And these are the references that I used. Um, you can go to our website, psychiatryeducationforum.com. Click on blogs and you can read this uh, chapter uh, in detail as well. But it... For I'm talking to our medical professionals now. If you're interested in learning more, I'm about to release this um, new lecture series on major depressive disorder, 10 augmentation strategy. These are 10 lessons. This is a 10 day long lecture series. Go to our, our website and go to blogs and you can find this post there with details of each chapter. I will say this, this is only for our academy members. Uh, if you're interested in learning more, please consider uh, joining our academy membership. But thanks again for listening to me. This is Dr. Singh signing off. You all take care and bye for now. Thank you all.